Welcome to the Practice Squad Podcast, Episode 2. I'm here with Carter, Ben, and Chris. You can check out our Instagram page, at the practice underscore squad. Without further ado, let's hop right into a player of the week. Carter, give me yours. All right. Uh, my clear choice is Stefan Gilmore. He had two solo tackles, four pass breakups, two picks, including a pick six, and 64 total return yards. I think it's just another great game in his Defensive Player of the Year campaign. <coughs> Alright. Yes? Yeah, um, sure. As I was saying, Stefan Gilmore... <coughs> as, I... <coughs> as I was saying, Defensive Player of the Year, Stefan Gilmore had a great game, again, and, uh, yeah. Alright, man, give me your player of the week. Rashad Perryman with six <laughs> targets, five receptions, 113 receiving yards, and three touchdowns. He also did have a carry for three uh, rushing yards. And no. he just... Yes, he did. No, I said, you know. Oh. Rashad oh. Perriman has been great ever since he's been drafted. Isn't that right, Gabe? Raven. Okay. Great Raven's Raven's if he could have pieced together one of those games over the three years he was there, we yeah. would have been filthy. Anyways, he stepped up in a big way with Evans out, and I was just impressed with and his Godwin. overall performance. Godwin's out too, though. Well, Godwin, yeah, was, in. Godwin was in for the first half. First. And Scotty Miller. Scott, is Scotty Miller... He he's was, not hurt, He was. Right? I think he's, he is. He has a concussion, doesn't he? Oh. I think he's running for them in... He was running in three wide sets, and now it's Perriman and Justin Watson. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, hit me with your player of the week. I have MVP Lamar Jackson. Love it. Uh, five touchdown passes, 65% completion percentage. Set the NFL single-season rushing record by a quarterback. Just another week of proving why he should be the unanimous MVP. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Um, oh, I would disagree with you, Unanimous. <laughs> not not Russell Wilson. Christian McCaffrey should get some votes. Mm-hmm. Christian McCaffrey has been he's been the Panthers doing. Okay, no- we're gonna have this. We're gonna have this on Christmas. Okay? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. My player of the week is a uh, famous Jameis Winston, with a hairline fracture in his hand. The dude had twenty eight completions, four hundred and fifty eight yards, four touchdowns, and of course one interception. Uh, he's had back-to-back 450-plus games. His team's on a four-game win streak, even though it doesn't matter because they won't make it. And uh, <clears throat> he's 18 behind George Blanda for the most interceptions in a season. He's He's got like he's 24, doesn't he? Blanda had 42. That Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. Blanda wasn't great. Um, we're going to hop into the news now. And the first one, and probably the most notable, being Drew Brees breaking the passing touchdowns record for now. Um, 541 passing yards. Brady is three behind him, and uh, yeah, what do you guys think about it? Well, when you say for now, who do you think is gonna pass him? Tom Brady. Tom Brady. You think Tom Brady is gonna play more games than Breeze? Yeah. Brady I... is how many? How many touchdowns behind two? Three. Three. So he's got 541. Um, Breeze has 541, but you're thinking? I think Brady's gonna play longer than Breeze. Breeze has also had like 150 more. Pass attempts from Brady. Could this yeah, be, that's, yeah. Could this be Breeze's last year? Yes. If they win if the they, Super Bowl, if they don't win the Super Bowl, he's returning. I think we'll he see. is one this year. He might, man. He might retire. If the Saints go out on the top, he absolutely will. I think next year will definitely be his last year if they don't know. So where are we putting Breeze all time in quarterbacks? Uh, fourth. Behind. So I have. What's that guy's name? Tom Brady at one, uh, Montana guy. Montana at two, Manning at three, and then Breeze at four. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I think three's fair. I I don't know if I, I, would, I don't know if I'd put Manning ahead of Breeze. If he wins a Super Bowl, he's locked ahead of, of Manning. He already has one. Yeah. Well, Manning had two. <clears throat> All right, well, I'm the bad guy in this. I think he's six or seven. Ooh. Who do you have ahead of him? I Oh, great. <coughs> he, he is all over. All right, Gabe, I'm, okay. No. I'm, <coughs> Gabe is a homosexual Dan Marino, for Dan right. Marino. I mean, Dan Marino's good, but... Okay, my dad's rubbed off on me a lot over the past, like, 12 Whoa, years. Oh, what? No, okay. No, 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 no. Oh, get, oh, get, oh, get that out, get that out, get that out. Technical foul. <laughs> One more and you're out of here, bud. All right, listen to me. <laughs> Tom Brady, Joe Montana, yes. Brett Favre, Peyton Whoa. Manning. Whoa. Oh, Brett Favre. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Man, you just have a boner for interception from <laughs> quarterbacks. You know what? <laughs> Brett Favre and Jameis Winston. And you know who's fifth? Who? Dan Marino. And then Breeze? Yes. I think that Marino is uh, more talented than Breeze. Breeze definitely has the numbers over Marino. 
But also you have to keep in mind that they did not throw as much in the 80s and 90s as they do okay, now. Okay, boomer. Okay. Okay. You, okay. Pro- you probably think Johnny Unitas is top 10, don't you? I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, okay. For the news, Matt Patricia is staying with Detroit this year. They are not going to fire them. Probably the most mediocre franchise or below average franchise in the NFL history. Uh, is this a good move or no? It's... I, I think it's a good move. I'd give him, like, one or two more years. Uh, I don't think Patricia's the problem in Detroit. But, I don't know. They they need to do something. They need to take some risks. <clears throat> and let Stafford go. I think it, it might, I think it might be time to just hit the reset button. And I think, bold take, Stafford to the Bears. Uh, that would be I, a good they would, I don't think they would trade him in division. Stafford to the Bears makes the Bears... A contender. Hey, Chicago Bears fan, what do you think about that? Stafford to Chicago? There's a lot of people on the block this year that could potentially go to Chicago because Chicago is looking like a, a really big quarterback market this year. Um, you got Cam Newton, who has... Cam Newton, I, I think they're going to keep Cam Newton now after Kyle Allen's... Okay, but he is a potential Cam Okay, Cam but Cam. what happens when Will Greer goes off in the last two games of the season? Oh, God. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. There's some solid There's some solid quarterbacks in the draft. Bears don't have any first-round picks, but Jalen Hurts falls as far down as the second round with the way that the NFL is shifting. We could get another mobile quarterback in the league. Um, Stafford is a above-average quarterback. Average, elite. slightly, but he's not elite. He's not elite. Okay, he's, I, think I think he's, he's top ten. Yeah. I'll give him. Yeah. Above, I'll give him above average. The Bears have one of the best defenses <laughs> in the league. Um, just having someone that can control the offense like Staff would be nice. <clears throat> that's fair. That's fair. Um, also, in the news, the Jaguars have fired Tom Coughlin. I think that's a good move. That is a I, great move. I heard a story that he set all the clocks in the Jaguars facility five minutes ahead of time, and they required everyone to be five minutes ahead of practice, or ahead of like the meetings, practices, everything. So, I don't know. He was just crazy. And he would, he would find people for showing up late when really they're on time. Yeah. yeah. And the issues with Fournette last year where Fournette just sat out, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it was kind of a mess, at least organizationally. So Dante Fowler, who's not with the team anymore, said that in his time with Jacksonville, he got fined seven hundred thousand dollars by the team. So the Jaguars are not a player-friendly organization, so I think this was smart. Yeah, Coughlin hasn't won anything there. It was just a matter of time. They had a team that looked like they could be contenders, but they just fell apart, and it's a smart move. Yeah, Blake Bortles happened. <laughs> Wait, so he was vice president, right? Is yeah. that is that GM or what is that? He uh, he, he basically he, made the moves. Yeah, he ran the team. So wait, what is what is GM like the position of GM? Is that called president? Executive. President of ops. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's ex- executive of the year. So. Okay. Last thing in the news is that the Cardinals released Terrell Suggs and he got claimed by Kansas City. Uh, four forced fumbles this year, which is insane. I think five and a half sacks. Yeah. I mean. I wish he went to Baltimore, but um, what do you guys think about it? Wish he went to Seattle. Uh, so, a bunch of teams put in waiver claims for him, but uh, the Chiefs were the, I mean, I guess you could say worst. They were lowest on the waivers for him. I know the no, Raven. I, I know the Ravens and Forty Niners both. Seahawks put in a cl- did too. And Seahawks all put in a claim for him, and he would help a lot of those Saints franchises. Saints did as well, and I think the Packers did too. I mean, it'd just be cool if he was on the Ravens. Uh, Mm-hmm. Seahawks have no pass rush whatsoever, mm-hmm. and yeah. San Francisco has depleted health at the D line position and <clears throat> pass rushing. So he would have helped all those teams, but he's on the Chiefs now. Great. Yeah, that's not gonna help. I mean, I think we might run into him in the playoffs. Yeah, it's not gonna Chiefs. help the Ravens' chances, or it's, it's not, not gonna, gonna help the Ravens' team. chances. Yeah, no, if no, it'll, it'll, help, it'll help the Chiefs. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Chiefs' biggest problem this year has been their. Uh, run defense, and I think that he could actually help them with that that part of the line because they're one of the worst run defenses teams in the league. Is, yeah, is Suggs a good run defender? Yes. Well, at this age, I I still think he is. He's mostly for pass rushing. Yeah. Um, I would not want to be hit by him at all. All right. Next, we're going to segue into game reviews, and the first one up: Bears thirteen against the Packers twenty one. The Bears are out of playoff contention now. Chris, how is this game? You know, it came. It came down to the wire. Um, Bears should have played way better this season. Trubisky was god awful. He he should be worried for his job. Um, 
They could have just lateraled it to Allen Robinson streaking down the sideline to keep him in playoff <laughs> contention. You need to cut your fullback right now. <laughs> yeah, he was trying. He was looking like he was going to be the hero. He looked like he's never been on the field before. Just wanted, to, just need to ladder up back to keep him in playoff contention. But it's just on the next year. <sighs> yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to say about this game except for you know the lateral. You're a top twenty quarterback away from the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, next one, we'll get quick on this. Seahawks 30, Panthers 24. This game was a lot closer than it should have been, especially with Kyle, Kyle Allen. Kyle Allen's Dude. favorite receiver, KJ Wright, had a great game. <laughs> yeah, Kyle Allen's going to have a hard time finding a job you, next okay. year, I think. All the throws were bad. All the picks were bad. Yeah. But the one that stood out to me was they were in their own territory. He's being pressured. He's running backwards. Oh, and, then, my- and then just flipped it like right to... The defender. He He's, did that to play before too. Got was, away with it. It was maybe the worst throw I've ever seen in a football game. It was that bad. Okay, but also um, the interception that got turned back. That wasn't an interception. Where there's a wide open dude, and he just decided to throw it across a body to He's Christian so McCaffrey. Bad. He's so. I mean, bad. he overthrew it, and it looked like a pick at the time. Yeah, it was awful, 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 awful. And um, onto Will Greer. Yeah, Will Greer. I mean, we'll see what happens with him. I think he can. Uh, I think he'll be decent this week. I don't see him as a long-term answer, but mm-hmm. definitely an upgrade. Is he's he on a rookie? No, he's, this is his second year. Jeez. He's a career backup and will stay that way. Next. If, he, if, he's cut, if he stays he'll in the league. Cut. Yeah. I, I mean, the XFL is probably going to be calling for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rest in peace to the AAF, by the way. I know, right? I brought. Is I, that, that that that's the, that was that one league that was I liked like that big league. around. Yeah, no, it was cool. I, I like that Salt league. Lake Stallions. Go shirt. go hot shots. Yeah. Hey. <sighs> Next up, we have the Eagles thirty-seven against the Redskins twenty-seven. This was a pretty close game, and Dwayne Haskins showed out for once in the NFL. Carson Wentz had one of the best throws I've seen this year to Miles Sanders in the back of the end. Oh yeah, great catch. Yeah. But uh, why do the Eagles have so much trouble with the Redskins? This is the second time this year. You remember the season opener, they had trouble too. Mm-hmm. I think Philadelphia is going to go in and get their ass kicked by a crippled Dak Prescott. Dak Pre- I mean, was it? Jerry Jones said that Dak Prescott's throwing motion is all messed up, but he's still going to play. So look for a lot of Zeke and probably a 10 carries for Pollard too. Absolutely, absolutely. I think Dallas is going to win though. I mean, we'll get to that in the preview. But yeah, it's a little worrisome that the Eagles... I mean, it's a divisional game. The Eagles should have beaten the Redskins. It was, a really, it was a three-point win, too, because well, they touched touchdown you... on the last play of the game. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was... Yeah. And they needed, uh, they needed overtime to beat the Giants last week, too. Yeah, they're... <laughs> With all that talent, it's kind of just disappointing. The well, Redskins also had a career day. Oh, he right. did. Can he I did. talk about something? How did Fletcher Cox make the Pro Bowl? He has not had a good year at all. No, he's he's sitting no, on like three, no. three and a half sacks. He he hasn't been great this year. And I I don't I'd have to like look at a list of people to pick the biggest snub. But one well, one notable one is eleven sack having Eric Armstead. All right, all right, okay. Wait, hold on. What are the Pro Bowl D tackles though? Is it just Donald and Cox? Donald Cox. I think you know who the biggest snub was though? Who? And I can't believe that they. Chose Cox over him. Donald Cox and Grady Jarrett. DJ Jones was pretty snubbed, oh, wasn't he? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, you said Donald. Oh, Donald. Donald Cox, Cox Jarrett. Grady Jarrett's Grady had Jarrett. a good year. Okay. He, yeah, he yeah, deserved yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but I okay. I'm sorry. I just Aaron Armstead has more tackles, more sacks, more tackles for loss than Fletcher Cox. But don't yeah, stats that's not mean anything for defensive line. But having eight more sacks. That's that's fair. That that's that means fair. something. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm, anyway. Arik Armstead for Pro Bowl. I mean, he probably will since no one wants to play in it. Yeah, he is an alternate. Yeah. Next up, we have the Minnesota Vikings smacking the Chargers 39-10. to This, oh man, Rivers has to be done this year, doesn't he? Chargers have to be on the top three list of most disappointing. I, I had them at 13-3 and three and the one seed at the start of the year. Hey, wow. same! <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. They played great last year. I think I had them wild card or something, but they're just... They have so much talent to be bad. I don't know. Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon's gone. He's gone. Absolutely. Eckler could probably be a top 10 running back. He'd be like Eckler, 10 or 9, but he'd Eckler be a top 10 very, running back. Eckler's very good. Very explosive. Eckler Absolutely. came out this year and proved that they don't They don't need Melvin Gordon. Melvin, right. They can get more losing Melvin Gordon than they can keeping him. 
Yeah. Yeah, I agree. With who that. would who would be in the market for Gordon though? Uh, Buccaneers. Yeah, yeah, if Tampa could have a but what game. but what can they give for? He's not a free agent, is he? Mm, yes, he is. He is. Yeah, he is. Really? That's yeah. Cr- yeah. Okay. If that's the, why if he the played. Buccaneers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the Buccaneers can scoop Gordon, that would be huge. They haven't had a thousand yard running back since Doug Martin in twenty fifteen. Jesus Christ. Yeah. What happened to him? The muscle hamster. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did Wait, I just answer your question? His <laughs> muscle hamstring? <clears throat> muscle hamster. That's his nickname. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Next up, we uh-huh. got the Houston Texans. Very crucial game. Beating the Tennessee Titans 24-21. to This surprised me. I didn't think they were going to go into Tennessee and win. I think their main thing was that they found out how to bottle up Henry. Yeah. Henry's been battling with the hamstring. They've been saying that he hasn't been as explosive as usual. He hasn't been as powerful. Um, still, um, uh, will be huge for them in the playoffs if they do make it. And they're gonna need him. Week seventeen is pretty much a playoff game, and sixteen. Pretty much this uh, this week on forward are playoff games for Tennessee. They lose one, they're out. Yeah, but uh, I think the I mean the play of the game was. This always happens with Tennessee. I feel like Tennessee always has like one momentum shifting play that ruins a game, which then ruins their season. Yeah. <laughs> For this one, it was the they were like goal to go, and it, uh, Tannehill put it on a receiver, <sighs> bounced off his hands, picked going Housed the other it. way. Yeah. Going the other way. Tennessee and, doesn't have it easy this week. They're playing New Orleans. And after that, after that pick, I mean, it was still a close game, but I just feel like. I don't know. I don't. I didn't give Tennessee any chance to win after. That. I think this is Houston's division. Yeah, but we'll we'll get on to that in the previews also. Um, next up, the Rams. Oh my God, went to Jerry World, lost forty four to twenty one. We had to put up with Skip Bayless all week. That's <laughs> terrible, man. Skip. Uh, yeah, I I don't even know what to say. I can't believe this. Where did the Cowboys come from? Well, their talent started living up to. What I they know, should be. Against the Rams, who are also a talented team, kind of in the same position. It's just, yeah, there's been a lot of adversity this Jared year. Jared Goff. A lot, a lot of people predicted that would be the NFC Championship. The Jared Goff year. sucks. Jared Goff is the worst quarterback in his division. Easily. Yeah. Oh, Without yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think he's sitting on 17 touchdowns, 17 picks right now. That's awful. Not good enough for a number one overall pick. No, not at all. He's, yeah, Goff, he's not finished, but he's... Ah, he's not I mean, good. how can he be finished when you just gave him that big of a deal? That's true. That's true. Yeah, they're going to have to sit with him for a while. McVay's going to have to come back next season with a lot of magic. A lot of people got big deals over the offseason, and Goff was one of the ones that was considered safer. Yeah. And Goff looks awful. And he, some of the other guys that got big deals are improved. Garoppolo, Wilson are both in playing better than they ever have Yeah. on big deals, and Goff just got worse. So. Sunday night football. The Bills beat the Steelers going into Heinz Field, 17-10. to It's pretty much what we expected, a defensive battle all the way. Yeah, Duck Hodges, he was tossing ducks, to be honest with you. It was not, it was not great. And he's going to start next week, too. That was, that was a very boring Is Rudolph, game, to be honest. Is yeah. Rudolph hurt still? He's not. Or th- what? Rudolph was never hurt. I swear he was hurt. That's what they were saying during the He got the a game. concussion. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. It. Well, yeah, yeah, but yeah. he could have that's played next injury. week. He could have played next week. Yeah, it's it's some some concussion sticks. It's not a health issue. Oh, especially yeah. you, concussion, you would, you especially concussion like that, <laughs> where he's slamming the helmet on top yeah, of Yeah, but his he's, head. he's not out because of health. Or when Jaya yeah. tackles. Mike Tomlin should seriously be considered coach of the year, making Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph an 8-6 and six team I, in, I, in, yeah. in yeah, a playoff yeah. contention. He should definitely get some, um, I don't know what the word is. Respect. Recognition. Yeah, recognition. Yeah. All right, hear me out. Steelers. Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> I mean, it would work. It would work. He'd be the best QB. He'd he'd be he would improve their team immediately. Yeah. The only problem is, would he improve it enough to to deal with all the distraction? Because I I just feel like there's no way that he stands for the anthem now. Probably and the, there's going to be a lot of drama there. I totally agree with him, but the standing. You can't really blame teams for not going after him because of it. So yeah. I see both sides. Like I agree with Kaepernick's cause, but uh, it, it, it's tough. It's tough because we don't know if he's ever going to come he, back. He would make them a better team for sure. He'd, yeah. he'd make a lot of teams better. Panthers, Bears. He'd make them all he'd better. Make the Panthers so much better. But 
is it worth it? Because yeah. because a lot well I don't know because a lot of the fans would turn on you too and the NFL is a business. Okay, but if he's making your team better, then your team's better. You get more popularity, more jersey sales. Yeah, well, I think he deserves a shot, but I just I'm not feeling People great just, about it. People are just I don't know. They're blowing up too much. He's just kneeling for an anthem. It's like, going. It's just it's just that he's just kneeling. And he's down. not even disrespecting the military. Do your research before you talk about it, please. It's going to be an interesting QB market with uh, free agency and Kaepernick being one of the better quarterbacks here. We'll see if the team picks him up. Teddy the, uh, Carter will love this game. Uh, if the Atlanta Falcons oh, beat the San Francisco 49ers 29-22, uh, Julio game-winning touchdown. All right. I said on our last podcast that there was a chance of a trap game here, and I thought it would be close. And that's because of, like I said, big win hangover, right? We went on the road, won a huge game, lost a bunch of people for the year, came home, and got complacent. It's as simple as that. Uh, Bad, bad loss. Fact of the matter is, though, they still control their own destiny, which is really important. If they win out, they're the one seed. Uh, And the Falcons are much better than their 5-9 record anyway. Mm -hmm. But still a bad loss. And San Francisco needs to... Their reserves need to step up in place of the injured people. Otherwise... There's not there's not going to be a deep playoff run. Now think about this: Seahawks one seed, Packers are two seed, right? Right now, yeah. Which okay, Saints are three seed. Can San you... Francisco's beat all three of those teams too. We haven't beat Sa- Seattle. Well, okay, I I think you guys will beat them. I do, but um, can you explain to me how Seattle's the one and Saints are the three? Yeah, I don't understand. They're both eleven know. and three. I don't know. The how Saints that works. have a tiebreaker. Three-way tie. Saints have a tiebreaker. They have a tiebreaker and point differential advantage. Okay, but it's a three-way tie, so the tiebreaker over Seattle doesn't count. It's something about division wins and then, like, conference wins or something like that. That's stupid. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't know for sure. They have sure, the same but... record, and they beat Seattle. That's, okay, but they didn't, they didn't beat Green Bay, so since it's a three-way tie between Seattle, Green Bay, and New Orleans, they go between those three teams. Well, hot take. Green Bay's losing this week anyway, so we'll see. Oof. All right, well... I guess let's talk about game previews now. <laughs> this could be the game of the week, and I'm not saying because it has a bunch of playoff implications or anything, but this is going to be a, just a shootout. It's going to be the Houston Texans 9-5 and five out of the 7-7 and seven Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Can Jameis have another 450-yard day? No, but he will win. Uh, I, think the, I, I like the Buccaneers a lot. Oh, yeah. I think next year, if they can get any... Any sort of either running game or, or pass or passing defense, they need one or the other. I feel like you need to be at least average or above average at three of the four elements to be a contending team. So, uh, run offense, pass offense, run defense, pass defense. They have the pass offense. They have the run defense. They need one more. If they can solve that, they're they're a playoff team. So this is interesting. I think you need to build around your quarterback, and obviously a running back would be building around your quarterback. Yeah. But I think the approach you want to take if you have Jameis at your quarterback is to get some DBs. Because, yeah. I mean, it's it's no... Um, In practice, he improves more. Better DBs. Maybe that's why he's thrown so many picks. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they're just awful coverages. He's like, oh. And then in game, he sees the same coverage, but they're just... Faking out. And that's actually not the crazy. That, that's not the that craziest happen, thing. Yeah. That might yeah. be it. But yeah, it's just it's no question that Jameis is in, um, interception prone, and I think if you put a better defense behind him, uh, Tampa Bay could be a pretty good team. And I might think they, I say, I think they like their identity as an offensive powerhouse. Oh, absolutely. I think Gordon needs to be their priority. That would be okay. That'd be good. It's just Gordon's looked pretty flat this year. I know, but I feel like a change of scenery boosts someone. And I think if the Buccaneers go out and show that they want him and will give up a lot to get him, I don't know. And to be fair, their entire offense has looked flat. The Chargers' offense, other than Mike Williams and Austin Eckler, for the most part, has looked flat. So if you put him on explosive Jameis Winston's side, I don't know. I think you got something there. If I were the Buccaneers, I'd rather try to draft a running back like Jonathan Taylor or Etienne. I don't. I, they're cheaper. Not J.K. Dobbins. Oh, Dobbins. No, but I was. I was thinking. I don't think you're gonna be around. I don't think Dobbins will be around by the time your draft pick is. Jonathan Taylor looks really good though. Yeah. I I like a proven guy better. I I don't know. I don't love drafting running backs, and I've missed on that before. I didn't think Zeke would be that good to be, but um, I don't know. I feel like drafting running backs is a big risk. It's tough though, because especially the, in the first. There's round. also a risk with Melvin Gordon though of his injury history. That's true. 
So that's something to look look forward to. But I, I feel like you got to go for it. They're at a stage now where they either, they need to go. We're we're make, trying to make the playoffs, or we're stepping back and starting over. Right. So, and I feel like they'd rather try to make the playoffs. I think they're closer to making the playoffs and rebuilding yeah, too. Yeah, for sure. I think so. I got a young quarterback. It's fairly young quarterback. Trying to, he'll probably he's peaking right now. He just needs to get the interceptions down. If you can get a great running back through free agency, pay him a lot of money, and then go through the draft and find some good corners coming out of college, you can put yourself in a contending spot because they're they're two positions away from being a legitimate contender. That's, that's true. That's very true. Um, also, contender need, might be strong. Playoff contender. They could sure. definitely be a playoff contender and shock some people though. Yeah. Well. Anyway. I think they're going to win this game. I think it's going to be a shootout, but I don't know. I just I feel like Tampa Bay is going to light up the Texans. I think Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins against uh, Tampa Bay's pass defense. That, that's true. That's going to be <laughs> Is it also fair to say Carlos Hyde's probably going to have like 11 rushes for 20 yards? Yes. Very okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, I would take the Bucks if they had Godwin and Evans, but because both are out, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no. Brashad Perryman and whoever else, fifth string receiver, that's not enough to I go. I feel like it just doesn't matter at this point. I feel like, as crazy as it is, Jameis Winston made them better this Jameis year. Jameis Winston makes his weapons better. Like, and that's just by pure fuck it attitude. Like, he will, he's just going to throw it. Like, you remember the play against when Tampa Bay was in Seattle and he just... Mm-hmm. Mike Evans was standing there, the DB was right there, and he just threw it. And they were both standing there for like three seconds, and... Evans probably pushed off a little bit, but went up and got it. And he has probably too much trust in his weapons, but we're basically first or not first take undisputed talking about the Cowboys, but all of us just talking about Jameis Winston. Nice. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with that. But the next Saturday, oh yeah, whoa, 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 we need score predictions. <laughs> all right, give me Houston thirty-seven. Give me Tampa thirty-five. Wow. I was gonna go with Houston thirty-seven, um, Tampa thirty-four. <laughs> Clever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was it. It just. I don't know. I have the same feel as like the Seahawks Texans game two years ago. I think one or two. That was a crazy game. That was it awesome. was. But go on. What is your prediction, Carter? Tampa Bay thirty four, Texans twenty four. I'm guessing a a massive shootout. I got Tampa Bay forty two. Texans 35. Jesus. Jameis, oh, I thought you were going to say like Jameis Texans Winston 50. has a career day proving that he is a future franchise quarterback. To be fair, a career day could be less yards, less touchdowns, no picks. That's that's true. Yeah. I feel like 380, 3 and 0 picks is a career day. Yeah. If he could Jameis, yeah. I think he's had two games where he's had zero picks this year. <laughs> and we're not counting fumbles either. So he yeah, might have had Right off the bat, game. he threw three week one, including one that hit Richard Sherman right in the hand. Yeah, he also had like a four game stretch vote where he didn't throw any. He was like 8 0 or something, or 8 and 1. And then he threw five at the Panthers yeah. in London. Yeah, that was awful. He still put up a good fantasy day, though. Moving on to the next Saturday game 10 and 4 Bills at the 11 and 3 Patriots. Huge game. I got the Patriots. I just don't think that there's any way the Bills are going to be able to move it on them. And you could make the arg- you could make the same argument the other way. Uh, I think that there's going to be a big defensive touchdown one way or another to swing this game. I think it's a bit of a toss-up, but I'll give the benefit of the doubt to the Patriots. So Buffalo is clinched. So is New England. Yeah, but this game, I mean... The Bills need New England to only, lose out. The they need them to lose one out. out. They're one game behind, but New England has a tiebreaker. Who does New England... New England plays Miami. <laughs> in New England, too, so there's no Miami magic. Hey, man, don't ever count Fitz Magic out. Ever. Uh, maybe if they had Dan Marino. Yeah, speaking of the, <laughs> speaking of the Buccaneers, Fitz Magic a couple years ago. <laughs> anyway. I got the Bills in this game. I think Josh Allen has more. Well, he does have more and better weapons than Tom Brady, and that's what's going to do it. Neither of them John, have weapons. John Brown is, he's been good. Cole he's, Beasley's been he, good enough. Right, he's been good. That's buff. That's been Buffalo. Good enough. Well, no, John Brown. I just feel good. like good enough. Beasley's been good enough. John Brown's. I think he's under ten yards away from getting a thousand yards this season. Carter's losing his hand. I feel like good enough doesn't do it at the Patriots though. No, it doesn't. No, especially against that defense, the best defense in the league. Well, Tom probably. Brady. Tom Brady's receivers just aren't good enough. That's true. 
These teams both desperately need like a dynamic weapon. And does any does anyone think Michelle or James White? Those are the two running backs, right? They don't. They're not starting. Are they starting? Well, they, Burkhead? Al- they also use Burkhead. Yeah, yeah they they're, 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 and Burkhead. Omar, they're, they're Omar Bolton's good for an end around every game. <laughs> the, those three running backs aren't going to be good enough against the Bills. I mean, long story short, the Patriots need to find a way to move the ball other than trick plays if they want to win the Super Bowl this year. Okay, but who do you trust in this game more? Buffalo's defense or New England's defense? Because that's really what's going to come down to. Because uh, neither offense is going to be explosive. Probably. I think that Josh Allen's going to make a mistake and the Patriots are going to capitalize. That's why I think a big defensive touchdown for New England is going to swing the whole game. Yeah, I got I, I got The game would be a tie if it was offense versus offense, but since the Patriots have been showing that they get a defensive touchdown quite frequently, I got, I got the Patriots going up 17-10 to 10 in a defensive battle. Yeah, that's a that's a good score prediction. Give me New England 16, Buffalo 13. It'll be close, but New England's going to come out with this win. Buffalo 20, New England 13. Hmm. Uh, Patriots 23, Buffalo 14. Moving on to the Saturday night game. The 8-6 and six Rams go at the 11-3 San Francisco 49ers. I'm so glad this is Saturday night football. I cannot wait to just sit down at home tomorrow and just watch this game. This is going to be such a good game. Uh, I think that mistake-prone Goff this year is going to... I don't think he's going to be good at all. Uh, San Francisco's getting Richard Sherman back. Uh, no defensive line held back, though. They were One of their D-tackles was supposed to come back, but he's still hurt. And Jimmy... Or Jaquaski Tart is still out. So they're still pretty banged up, but I think they're going to bounce back in a big way, and I think we're just going to run it all over them. The last time we played them, the only touchdown they had was an end-around to Robert Woods. It was 20-7. to So... That's what I was going to get to. I think those end rounds to Woods and Reynolds. Reynolds is the other guy that can Not Brandon rounds, Cooks. Right? <laughs> Cooks, too. Cooks is faster right. than anyone I know. else. Re- I know, but like re- the last Rams game I watched, which was the Seahawks, it was Reynolds and um, Woods. No, yeah. Cooks, Cooks was hurting that. I we have a better you know, pass Cook- defense than Seattle, though. Yeah. That, that's it's just fair to say. <laughs> hey, shout out to Jimmy Ward. That's true. <laughs> hey, it'll be. This is going to be a good game. I think it will be close. I mean, the Rams kind of need to win out. We'll get to playoff implications in a minute, but I mean, the Rams. They just don't look good this year. It's so frustrating to watch. Um, well, not for me. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> they look pretty good when they played the Bears. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, Everyone looks good. All right, three to scores. Yes, yes. I got. I don't think it's going to be close. I think we're going to hit him in the mouth. I think we're pissed off. Uh, I think it's going to be San Francisco 34, Rams 13. All right. I have a bet to win and miss with Carter, so I need the Rams to win. Um, And I also said they'd run the table and they got killed by Dallas. Give me a Rams 30, San Francisco 27. Man, can we make another bet? Please, no. No. (laughs) San Francisco 30, Rams 24. Um, I think this game is just going to be a, a borderline blowout. It's probably going to be garbage time t- touchdown by Goff. It's going to be 27-20. Moving on to the Sunday games. 8-6 and six Steelers at 5-9 and nine Jets. I mean, there's not really much. There's not a lot to talk about, but since Pittsburgh's in the playoff mix, I mean, I guess we can talk about it a little bit. Steelers more, Jets less. Next. All right, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think the Jets are going to come out with a win. <laughs> oh, <was> <laughs> no. Um, next up, the eleven and three Saints at the eight and six Titans. Tennessee needs this game, so does New Orleans. If Tennessee loses and Pittsburgh wins, Titans are out. I got Titans. Uh, if the Titans lose, they're out. Yeah, I I like the Titans a lot right now, man. I think that they're gonna come out motivated. I think they're gonna win. I think that uh, New Orleans might be on too much of a high from last week, and I don't. It's tough because there's always a. A line between are they going to continue momentum or are they going to get complacent? And right. the best Super Bowl winning teams keep the momentum going. Mm-hmm. And then the San Francisco 49ers get complacent and lose to the fucking Falcons, right? Anyway, I think the Titans are going to come out and uh, I think they're going to get a win. I think Derrick Henry's going to rebound and just go crazy. Against the Saints run defense. I do, honestly. <sighs> All right, man. Yeah, I like the Titans in this one also. The Titans, they're playing for survival right now. They're more motivated. The Saints pretty much, I give it like an over 80% chance they get a top two seed. 
Because I don't think the Packers are going to... That's pretty high. Nice. hold it up. Very nice. I would, I would, this week. Okay, do you, oh, do actually, you think... Actually, you're right. You're right. I forget. Top I forget not, the, not the one. Yeah, I forget that not San Francisco and Seattle can both make it. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll for sure get a first round by. I don't, I don't believe in the Packers that much. Packers are in a position where they could fall to the wild card this week. That's true. Yeah. Um, I think the Saints are going to win this. I mean, they're they're riding the energy up. So, and Tennessee with a loss, I mean, we'll see how they rebound. Henry's not 100%. That's looking for trouble. Biggest problem for the Titans this year has been their receiving inconsistencies. A.J. Brown has been re- insane the last two games, at last three games. Um, can he deal, can he shake Marshawn Lattimore's shadow, though? <laughs> Not yet. No. Not yet. No. <laughs> so they're going to put it in the hands of Corey Davis and Delaney Walker. And, yeah. Well, Delaney Walker's on the IR. Oh, is he really? Yeah. I don't know. I didn't know about that. So John U. Smith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything else to add, Chris? Um, yeah. I, got, I think the Saints are going to win this game. Um, they're just healthier. They're more talented. Um, Drew Brees was has been really good the last few weeks. I got the Saints winning 30-23. Okay, I have a question. Is there anyone who can guard Michael Thomas? No. No, so not a show. No. That's a stupid question. All right. All right. Just making sure. The best receivers in the world, no one can guard. That's how it is in football. The best players in the world in basketball, no one can guard. It, it's just about containing. Well, I can guard Giannis. Michael Thomas shows no, up when it matters, too. No one can guard Giannis. But... Giannis in the playoffs last year. Held. Did you see Giannis okay. yesterday? Okay, but you Giannis can't. dropped five threes. Okay, this yesterday. is an NFL podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but hear me out. Giannis kind of just destroyed himself against the Raptors in the playoffs last yeah, year. Yeah, but didn't I mean, he? but the best superstars are unguardable, right? Pretty much. So yeah. like, like Kevin Durant, you can't guard him. No, you you might force him into an off game, like rarely, but you can't guard him. What makes a superstar a superstar is that the only way that they can beat them, uh, the only way that they can get beaten is when they beat themselves. Right. That's fair. And Thomas is having historically maybe the best NFL season by receiver ever. He's been better. He's, he's yeah. been better receiving than a lot of teams have. Yeah, like the Ravens. Uh, how like many? The Bears. Uh, <laughs> how many tight end receiving yards has Baltimore had this year? I don't, I don't know. know about wide receivers. I don't know how many yeah. how many pass yards does Lamar Jackson have? <laughs> I'd say it's about the same. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I mean, New Orleans is kind of missing Mark Ingram right now. Uh, that yeah. Give me the Saints, twenty one. Give me Tennessee 14. It's going to be a low-scoring game. Titans 27, New Orleans 24. I, I have just such a good feeling about the Titans right now. I don't know. Man. I got Titans 34, Saints 20. All right. Next game, 12-2 and two Baltimore Ravens. That was 6-8 and eight Cleveland Browns. But Browns still have a shot to make the playoffs, so don't <laughs> tell me this game is not important. <laughs> so now let's talk about the Ravens. All right. Long, all right. The Ravens are the best team in the league for a few reasons. They have offense and defense. They have the best quarterback in the league at the moment. And they are the healthiest team in the league. Like, the fact that they've kept all their key players healthy this year is amazing. Like, Seattle's been dealing with Clowney and Quandre Diggs is hurt right now. Uh, San Francisco's been hurt all across the board. Saints, Drew Brees was out, obviously. Baltimore stayed consistently healthy, and I think as long as that goes on, I don't think they're going to get beat, especially not by Baker Mayfield. <laughs> not with all the drama that's going on right now, Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr. both telling people that, to come get them. You know it's bad when you're yelling at the Cardinals to come get you. <laughs> all right, let's talk about Baker Mayfield week four, talking about to his team that if they made Lamar throw, they'd win. I mean, they did win, but uh, Lamar <laughs> Lamar did throw, and uh, now I think uh, if we make Baker Mayfield throw, I think we're going to win. Yeah, uh, Baker's not. I mean, do you call it a good. sophomore slump, or is he not good? I think it's a sophomore slump. Yeah. So you think he's going to bounce back next year? Yeah. I don't know, man. I feel like they've got a lot of weapons. Chubb, Hunt, Landry, Odell, and you're below five hundred. And, oh yeah, you said huh? Yeah. It was, a, it was an early Christmas present knowing that Freddie Kitchens was going to stay for Browns. It was great. I told you. It was perfect. I told you. I know, I was wrong, and I'm so glad I'm wrong. Yeah. That was great. What do you have to talk about this game, Ben? I think they're just going to run it with Nick Chubb, and I think he's going to carry them to a win. 
Really? I do, yeah. They beat Again, them once before. You think the Browns are going to sweep the Ravens? I do. They have, I don't, our, I don't, they have our number. I don't think the Browns are winning the play. Not winning the playoffs. Making the playoffs. <laughs> I don't think they'll be the seventh seed either. That's going to be either the Steelers or the Titans, I think. Yeah. yeah cause the Bills have it, yeah. But I just feel like the Browns, they still have a shot at the playoffs. They're going to try to come out and win and make the playoffs. But they'll win, but not make the playoffs. Um... I got Baltimore. They're yeah, just they're, <laughs> really <laughs> yeah. They're they're. It's not gonna be close. Baltimore is just gonna. Lamar's gonna run all over him. He's gonna probably have another multi touchdown passing game. Maybe even a couple multi touchdown running game. Um, yeah, it's just not gonna be a fun game to watch from the Cleveland side. Give me Cleveland twenty four, Baltimore thirty one. That's my final prediction. Cleveland 31, Baltimore 24. Uh, divisional game on the road, it'll probably be close. And against the Browns. Ravens 20, Baltimore. No, Ravens are scoring. Ravens 27, Cleveland 21. Playing in Cleveland is a not very fun atmosphere. It just feels chaotic, as uh, Mason Rudolph would have felt. Um, I got... <laughs> I got... Ravens 28, Browns 21. Next game we go the 4 9 and 1 Cardinals at the Seattle Seahawks here 11 and 3. Um pretty much the same thing as uh, Steelers Jets. Hear uh, me out. Well, no 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 no. Seattle Hear me out. Okay. Okay. This is probably ridiculous, but San Francisco went on the road to New Orleans, won, took the first seed, came back home to a 4 win 9 loss team and lost in a trap game. I see where you're going. With right? This. Seattle just went on the road, got a win that gave them the first seed, and they're coming home to a 4 and 9 team that they should beat. Now, I'm not saying they're going to, but I if the Seahawks take this game for granted, they're going to lose. Another thing, they have six defensive starters out. Well, not out, injured right now, and it's their best six defensive players. Wagner, Diggs, Clowney. Ons has been good. I don't I don't know if he's top 5. I don't but think she, he's playing. Griffin's also hurt. And which which Griffin? She she killed Griffin. Why would I talk about she? Hands or hand? Hands. <laughs> okay. And uh, there's one other player out. Oh, Michael Kendricks. He's also quite good. Yeah. So. I mean, I do think Seattle's gonna win because I don't think I don't think the Seattle environment lets them take any game for granted. But uh, if they do take this game for granted and chalk it up as a win before, they're gonna lose. I mean, the environment this year hasn't really helped Seattle that much. I mean, it's still loud as hell. I don't. I don't even mean like the fans. I just mean the culture. Just, of their locker room. Oh, absolutely. I don't. I don't think they take any game. For yeah, granted. the most boring interviews ever. <laughs> but if sure. they do take it for granted, I think that Kyler's gonna pull it out. K one has been in a slump the last two games, but I think against the Seattle secondary, I think he's gonna have a field day with them. He played the. Oh, yeah, he, did, he should have played better against the Browns, but to be fair, the week before he played the Steelers. Yeah, really good defense. well, Kenyon Drake kind of happened against the Browns. Yeah. That's that was pretty insane. How do we not say that for a player of a game, or player of a week? He had four touchdowns. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. also for Seattle, Al Woods just got suspended for the same thing as Josh Gordon. <laughs> so We didn't even talk about Josh Gordon. Bong buddies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think Josh Gordon's done, man. Yeah, let's just talk about it right now. I think he's done. I actually had a Is there anything speech else to prepared say? No. on why he shouldn't be suspended. Okay, but really hear it. it's wrong. It's right call, wrong rule. I right? know, but it's just he's dealing with anxiety problems. He's That's been doing he's drugs. And pain. He's been doing drugs since sixth grade. He's been suspended yeah. throughout his entire career from right. middle five school times. to the NFL. I think it's been five it's, times by the NBA, NFL. Yeah, eight, yeah maybe by in NFL. total. Yeah. Or yeah. something like that. I mean, you want to talk about high school where you had to transfer? I mean... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, but I'm he's, sorry. he's... I think he's done. He's done. I think he's the done. only team... He's not doing know. the drugs, like, the, like, bigger drugs that he was doing in, like, high school and middle you don't know school that. and all that. You don't know that. Okay, well, do you think he is? Probably. You think he's doing meth You think he that? has self-control? I don't think he's doing meth. Also, oh, wait, you wait, can... He, was, he, he did can, meth? He did meth in yeah, like, I don't think he's I bet he's probably on, like, Adderall, though. You can get away away with a lot more when you're not um, under NFL's yeah. microscope. Right. Yeah. Now. Ran quotes random drug tests. Right? Yeah. XFL could have a star coming. <laughs> or the Redskins, they they don't care. <laughs> that's <laughs> Ruben, that's true. Ruben Foster. <laughs> or Cowboys. Okay, we or can Cowboys. just go, we can just go down the list about that. Um, 
Final score predictions. Arizona 34, Seattle 38. This is going to be a shootout. Seattle 27, Arizona 20. God, I really want to do it. I really want to. No one's stopping you from. I can't. Seattle 28, Cardinals 20. I got Russell Wilson puts on an MVP caliber day. I got Seattle 35, Cardinals 21. But Chandler Jones goes for a multi-sack game against that Seattle offensive line. That's not even a hot take. That's just going to happen. Yeah. And also you Chandler need... Jones strip sack touchdown? Joey Probably. Hunt. Joey Hunt's also out. Chandler Jones. Our backup center. Chandler so. Jones didn't even get elected to the Pro Bowl. San Francisco and Seattle are limping into the playoffs right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. Wait, so is Russ... Saints okay. are looking good. Hear me. I think that healthy San Francisco and Seattle are both better than the Saints. But, I would agree. But at their current state, the Saints are the best of the three. Like, mm-hmm. here... I mean, an example of San Francisco is that their three best defensive linemen are playing 90% plus of the snaps. So they haven't got any pass rush the last few weeks because they're gassed. All their defensive line depth is out. And Seattle, I mean, their defense is just banged up all across the board. So they need they both need to get healthy or get some contributions from backups or the Saints are coming out of the NFC. I agree. And when you were, t- Chris, when you are talking about um, MVP caliber uh, game, you meant runner-up MVP, right? Yeah. Yeah, runner up ca- he'll, or, or well, third, no, it can, or third no, he or fourth. Can, yeah, I you can, mean, you really can have an MVP. MVP. You can have an MVP caliber game and not be the MVP. Yeah, yeah. there's no yeah, way. That's yeah, true. That, that's 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 famous famous I don't, uh, <laughs> Exactly. Did you not give a joke, man? I, I got it. He's not <laughs> winning. <laughs> pointless. It was anyway. pointless. Colin Coward still has him as MVP, meaning Lamar's got it locked up. Yeah, Colin yeah. Coward kind of <laughs> sucks off Russell. Wilson. Okay, the Dallas Cowboys are going into Philadelphia. Both teams are seven and seven. This means a lot. What are your guys' takes on it? I think an injured Dak Prescott is gonna beat the Eagles. I, I don't, I don't trust the Eagles at all. I don't know. I just, I don't think they're that good. I got Dallas, and this is this is basically a competition of who gets to lose to the team that loses in Week 17 out of Seattle and San Francisco. Yeah, I got the Cowboys. Eagles lost to the Dolphins. Like it's yeah. I'm assuming uh, this is going to be covered by Troy Aikman and Joe Buck. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're correct. It's an evening yeah. game and it's pretty. Yeah, oh, oh my is, it, is it Sunday night football? No. Okay, thank All God. All right, picture this: Joe Book, Joe Buck, and Booger McFarland. You were about to say Joe Booger. Yeah, I was. <laughs> Joe Buck and Booger McFarland commentating a Cowboys Patriots game. Oh. With, listen, with Steelers and Eagles fans in the crowd. That, sounds, oh. that would be the worst NFL game in history. And in Monday Night Football game, right? Monday Night Football. Oh, yeah. oh, my. Oh. <laughs> oh, dude. Anyway, what was that chair that they had Booger on last last year where he had the that sideline uh, yeah. machine? <laughs> <laughs> they need to kick him back outside on that thing. Uh, the Gridiron Heights they had of that was so yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I can't believe. Chris, do you have anything to add to this game? Um, I think Dallas just walks all over Philadelphia. I think Philadelphia is a bad a. Bad team, and I think Wentz has been a fairly. He's been bad. He has not been the MV caliber player that he has a couple years ago. He's just not been the same. Um, I got Dallas winning thirty five to fourteen over Philadelphia. How the hell did the Eagles win in Lambeau? I won money off of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I, know. my preseason pick. I had the Eagles going like NFC Championship or Super Bowl or something. I don't. I thought they were going to be really good. We thought a lot of teams this year are going to be good who are disappointed, though. Chargers and Eagles. Cowboys. Rams. Falcons. Rams. Actually, Gabe with the Bears. hard take of the Cowboys missing the playoffs. No one thought the Bears hey. were going to be good. Hey, no. thank you. Gabe thought the Bears were going to be good. He had the Bears in the Super Bowl. That's right. Okay, okay, okay. okay. He had the Bears in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Get that out. Okay, I should get some credit for saying that the Ravens were going to go 13-3 and at the start of the season. Did you really? Yeah. I should get credit for saying San Francisco was going to be 11-5 and or better. Well, okay, well, you to be biased. fair, that was, you are biased. That was blind hope. I didn't actually think we yeah. were going to go eleven and five or better. I, I was realistic and I said the Seahawks were going to. Do be I get credit six. for thinking Lamar would win an MVP in his career? No. Yes, you're biased. <laughs> hey. You are biased. <laughs> but he was right. Okay, I have like I have like twenty rookie Lamar Jackson cards. I know. It's anyway, <laughs> I hope he. All right, this, what game this is going. Here? I need to say my prediction. This is a game that means a lot right now, but in the long run, it means absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, I'll go with the Philly underdogs, because every time I pick against them, they win. Give me the Eagles 28, Cowboys 25. Cowboys 27, Eagles 
Seven. I think this is gonna be the most boring game ever. Cowboys nineteen, Eagles ten. It could be a high scoring game and Joe Buck commentating would make it the most boring game ever. Mitchell. Going to Sunday night. Mitchell. Going to Sunday Mitchell. night. Mitchell. <laughs> Down at the twenty five. <laughs> Going to the Sunday night game, this was my um, Super Bowl preview before we were regular season. My Bears. The 10-4 and four Chiefs go at Chicago 7-7. Seven and seven. Kansas City looks like a top three team right now. Kansas City is yeah. on fire. I still think Patrick Mahomes is the most talented quarterback in the league. Uh, Lamar's been better this year, but I don't, I don't know. If I had to take one quarterback out of anyone, it's Mahomes. I agree. Um, and Chicago's, I don't know. I don't, they could play spoiler, but at the same time, I just feel like they, they're they giving up. So I, I think the Chiefs are going to win this, and I don't think it's going to be close either. Mahomes is due for like a 350-yard day. I I know the Bears' defense is good, but they're also going up against Patrick Mahomes. 350-3? and three? I, I could see that, yeah. Easily. Big day for Tyreek Hill. It's kind of devastating for Chicago, too. You know, I think Chicago's going to come out on top in this game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you want a bet? Is there a bet happening right now? Mm-hmm. Ten bucks straight up. No. no. Ten bucks. I, okay. How about I this? do not feel confident in my Bears, but ten, bu- ten bucks, but you get the Bears plus four. I feel like if they're going to win, they're going to win by three. I feel like they're going to win by field goal. <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> okay, but Bears plus four means if they win by field goal, you win. <laughs> and if the Chiefs win by a field goal, you still win. I'm taking the no, ladies and gentlemen, Chris Peterson. I don't feel I don't feel confident enough in the in the Bears to even come out on top. Uh, and if they do win, it's gonna they're gonna get blown out. Hey, remember when we made that bet on if the Bears were gonna win the Super Bowl or not? Yeah, yeah, I won that one. Yeah, ten bucks for a hundred bucks. I'm taking that. That's every true. Time. I gave them one to ten odds. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, do you have more to say? I think Trubisky plays like a number. Like a number 31 overall pick, not the number two, but he goes as a late first round quarterback play, playing and uh Yeah, late first round quarterbacks have been awful. Yeah. Especially Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got the And Chiefs. Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> not good at all. I'm kidding, by the way. Just a disclaimer. I got the Chiefs in this game because, I mean, the Chiefs defense isn't amazing, but they don't have to do much against the Bears' offense. <laughs> and I just think Patrick Mahomes, he's just too good for the Bears to contain. Oh, David Montgomery has a career day against the Kansas oh, City whatever. defense. Okay. I could use that in fantasy. Yeah. So. <laughs> Chiefs 38, Bears 17. Chiefs 31, Bears 10. Bears 17, Chiefs 10. <laughs> you, think, <laughs> you think you're holding the Chiefs to 10 points? <laughs> It's Watch, okay. he's going to be wrong. I should know. Correction. Correction. Bears 24, Chiefs 17. Uh, oh, you're going on to a touchdown now. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, better, but not good. All right. All right, Chiefs 34, Chicago 10. We're going to look really dumb if Chicago wins this game. Yeah. And shut out Kansas City. Right. Okay. Going to a Monday night game, this is the best game of the week, probably, for playoff implications, at least. Um, 11 and 3 Packers up with 10 and 4 Vikings. What's going to happen this game? <sighs> I got Vikings. Well, okay, Dalvin Cook's out. That hurts them a lot. And Madison's out too, isn't it? Isn't he? Uh, so Mike Mike Boone, uh, Mike Boone's gonna carry the load for the Vikings. You mean Dalvin Cook three point out? Right, because they all. I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> they all have dreads. They all have dreads. Yes. Um. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh. Although I do think Kirk is gonna go off. Kirk Cousins is quietly having an MVP caliber season. I think it's I think it's a crime that Aaron Rodgers got into the Pro Bowl over Kirk Cousins. I think it's ridiculous. I mean, Rodgers won't show up to it. I know, but still. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think Kirk goes off, and I think the Vikings are going to win at home. <sighs> See, if the Vikings had Cook, I would take them. Or Madison, I would take them. Because they looks do... looks good. Yeah, but... I don't know. I... I trust Aaron Rodgers more than Kirk Cousins in a game like this. It's high stakes. Rodgers is just... He's just more clutch than Cousins. Primetime Kirk, baby. I mean, okay, that last... Oh, wait, is this Sunday night? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Uh, God. (laughs) Booger! (laughs) All right. Kirk Cousins breaks his only defeated record on Monday night and beats the Packers to take the division. It wasn't his fault last time, though. No, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But, yeah, I got the Packers. That's a great game, huh? Uh, I think we're going to split this year. A little slap pick. I think uh, Minnesota. I think I think uh, Minnesota's gonna win this game. Give me the Vikings twenty four. Give me Green Bay sixteen. This is going to be a okay. I don't know what you're doing for time. All right, Chris. What's your prediction? What's your prediction? What's your prediction? Let's go. I have, that is, oh, sorry. I have the Vikings winning only to get, only to get disappointed by the. Actually, no. I have the Packers losing this or Packers winning this week, and then week seventeen. Vikings get knocked out of the playoffs by the Bears in order to for the. You're Vikings. only saying that because the Vi- you're going to that game. Yeah, I want something going on. You realize, <laughs> you realize for you to knock the Vikings out, your prediction of 49ers beating the Rams can't happen. Oh yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Vikings. Vikings beat Green Bay, and then lose to the Bears. In week seventeen, if the Vikings win, then they're in the playoffs. They're in, they're already. He's talking about division. League yeah, now. no, they'll go. Oh. They'll fall to the wild. He card. gave up on the playoffs. No, <laughs> I'm out. I, I'm so, what's your prediction? Uh, Vikings twenty eight, Green Bay twenty one. Both teams, more than the Chiefs, will get against the Bears, according to you, right? Yeah, but, yeah. I got, nice. I got Vikings twenty four, Packers uh, sixteen. Vikings 23, Packers 26. I have a bold take. Aaron Rodgers doesn't throw a touchdown. Mm, I'll For bet second. on that. I thought you were going to say he doesn't throw a pass. <sighs> I don't know if I want to bet on that because it was a hot take. <laughs> we'll think about it. We'll think about <laughs> we, it. All right, all right. Um, so that's it for the reviews now. Um, let's talk about two head coaches who are on the hot seat. I was going to say potentially, but they definitely are. Pat Shermer. Let's go with him. He's eight and twenty-two. He's, gone. <laughs> he's, gone. he's eight. You can even tell in his press conferences. He knows. I don't think he um, even cares. He's eight and twenty-two with the Giants, and he's eighteen and forty-five all time. No, it's he uh, he coached the historic early two thousand ten Browns. Jesus, you know it feels like a lot of times when coaches get fired, they always find their way back into another NFL coaching job. I don't think that'll be the case here. I think he's done, man. Pat Shermer is the Kyle Allen of coaching. Ooh, that's pretty <laughs> bad. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I think Shermer's done. I think Rivera's going to replace him. Yeah, Shermer's definitely done. It's a great fit with Rivera, too. What, what, what has Shermer done to, like, any part of his coaching ability? What's he shown for a reason that you should keep him? Was he Nothing. any part of drafting Saquon? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, that, he's got something. I he, think he drafted a player that was supposed to be amazing, and he was amazing. I think. But was he done with a guy who could potentially be one of the best running backs ever? Nothing. N- not he's give, done not, not giving him an offensive line. Let him get injured, and yeah, not giving him a passing game to balance it out. He's given him Eli Manning. Shut up. <laughs> who, by the way, got benched again for Daniel Jones this week. Also, didn't he trade away Odell? I mean, it was a good trade, yeah. but if you're rebuilding and you have a good young receiver, a good young running back... Odell won it out, though. Not, uh, yeah, uh, and also, can you really put all the blame on Shermer? No, 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 not on that one. Okay, but the thing is, with players asking to be out, you, you just don't trade him. Oh, yeah, and their defense has looked horrible this year. Yeah. And last year. Getting Peppers yeah. was smart. I think the Giants won that trade for sure. Yeah. Odell was never Yeah, they won that trade, but it's Baker's fault that yeah. they won that trade. <laughs> yeah. Or, well, Baker and Freddie Kitchens. It's not Odell's fault. Odell was never built for New York. O- I, I really want to see Odell get out of Cleveland. I, w- I want Odell to go to a team with an actual passing game. I'm fine with Odell staying in Cleveland. Yeah, me too. Chris? I don't want him there. Go on. With what? Oh, you're saying <laughs> you're okay. Saying okay. Odell. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, Odell was never built, never built for New York. Oh, I completely disagree. I think he was a perfect fit for New York. No, I feel like I, I don't think he was a perfect fit. Let, it, let the man talk. Shh. I don't think he was a fit for the New York team, but New York itself. I, think I feel was. like somewhere where you're playing on the most popular team in New York, you always have the spotlight on you. Odell has always been one to like that. Got, I, exactly. I would disagree so with the fits. spotlight. In New York, there are so many different things going on that they're not always talking about Odell. But when he's in Cleveland, what's going on in Cleveland? Okay, but they talked a lot about Odell. They're talking way more about Odell in Cleveland. I've seen way more. Okay, but when the, me- okay, when no, the media is no. rooting for Cleveland as hard as the media is rooting for Russell Wilson, you can see that the Browns are getting a lot of media No, attention. they don't root for anybody as hard as they root for Russell Wilson. Anybody. The media? Except Lamar Jackson. I'm fine with that. <laughs> it's not even a bad thing. It's just how it is. Yeah. 
Going on to the next head coach, Dan Quinn. This dude's a player's coach for sure. I mean, everyone, he's, not, he's not getting fired. Everyone loves him. He's a 41 and 37 with Atlanta. The, um, they've regressed every single year since 2017, record wise. They're, he's not losing his job. I honestly think, as meaningless as that 49er game was for them, like this season, I think it saved his job. I think that he's going to. Is he. Uh, is this his last year on his contract? Oh, I have no idea. Well, either way, I think he's staying. I don't think he's gone. And especially since Arthur Blank is such a f- like coach-friendly owner. like He's not one that, that you'd expect to pull the trigger right away. Uh, I think he's going to stay. I think the culture is not that bad there. And who who would replace him? Like, What are your options? <laughs> no one, really. I mean, unless Roman you're stupid down Vera, to, Unless but... you're going down to college. Yeah, I but wouldn't. I that's, think, that's a risky business. I don't, and I don't think coaches. the best coordinators want to leave. Yeah. Like Roman, I don't think he wants to leave. No. Yeah, it's it's interesting. And Matt Ryan quoting him, he said they're doing everything they can to keep him. Yeah. Yeah. They're playing for Dan Quinn now. Every single week now is their super. If you're playing for your coach, he you shouldn't get fired. Yeah. Like I think I think the Dolphins respect Flores a lot. Flores has just completely gone in and just changed he is that culture. All in on that team. Have you guys seen... I have, so yeah, much, okay. I have so much respect for Brian Flores. I can't believe he got fined, though, for going off on that ref. He should have gone off on the ref. I know. I mean... they well, need. Alright, I'm sorry. I know this is completely unrelated. They need to take out the review pass interference rule. They yeah. Need, it, it needs to leave. Saint fans have ruined it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think Dan Quinn should be fired. I don't think he will be fired. It's just been a lot of injuries this year. Neil's been out the whole year, correct? Mm-hmm. Who else has been out? Um, what's his name? For oh, no. Years. No, the other guy. What? Julio's been battling with injuries all year. Yeah. He's been doing that his whole career. Yeah. Beasley's also just regressed. Ridley's That's, out for the year yeah. now. Yeah, they lost Coleman, which yeah. was actually a bigger deal than it, it seemed. Like. Yeah. Coleman on Atlanta was definitely better than Coleman on the Niners. Yeah, he, just, he doesn't have any big playability on San Francisco. No, kind of well, like kind of like Sonny Michelle on New England. Well, he's been better than that. He's been better <laughs> yeah, than yeah, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> well, he did. He did have a four touchdown game against Carolina. It was either three or four. I think it was four. Yeah, the week after I traded him away, he did that. Yeah, uh, we don't need to talk about long term. It was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, since we're on the topic, let's talk about Brian Flores. What about him? is he on not, the hot a, seat? Okay, uh, I hope he's not. Is there anyone who's saying that he is? Because I uh, Flores should get at least four years maximum. Get being put into Minimum. a franchise like that with a roster like that. Yeah, he should get. He should have some time to work with it. He, I mean, he made the right call, uh, benching Rosen for Fitzpatrick when a lot of people were calling for him to just start the young guy. Absolutely. Uh, Devontae Parker has come on lately. Yeah, he looks like... They, he looks the They don't have a lot of pieces, but I don't know, man. You can't fire the guy. He's come in with... And the fact that they were 15 weeks deep, and he still has such passion and everything for a lost season, and is fighting so hard for his players and everything, I think that alone deserves... Uh, recognition and credit and i think the dolphins even if they i think they, have, res- like, I think they respect him a lot yeah i think the dolphins um if they've exceeded expectations like a record rise god man words are that's, tough that's record wise and i mean even if they weren't i mean flores's mentality and the way the team's been just working super hard the yeah. entire year i mean it's cool to watch for dolphins because we're all trying really hard but um I think Flores should get four or five years maximum. And it looks like, I mean, a lot of teams that get blown out all the time don't have fun. It looks like they're enjoying themselves out there. Oh, yeah. Which I think is huge. They lost two people that were supposed to be key, key parts of their future, Minka Fitzpatrick, and Carrion Johnson left, and he went to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, what in the hell did you just say? Houston Texans left tackle, Carrion Johnson. <laughs> what did you just say? Kenyon Drake. No! Oh, not even him. Not Larry Tunzel. Larry Tunzel, one of the best tackles in the league. <laughs> Come on out. The Dolphins have Miles Gaskin. Oh yeah, they have Matt. Carry on. <laughs> okay, can we talk about the Dolphins' running game, bro? <laughs> Kalen Balaj is probably the historically worst runner ever. Yeah, it's less than two yards per carry. It's, it's like, like they're like, all studying Sony Michelle. Truly. Yeah, really are. <laughs> no, I wish Gaskin was bigger because he'd, he'd just be so much better. He's like, he's so explosive. He's fast. He can catch well. It's just he's like tiny. Where do the Dolphins start? Like, what? where do they start here? I say O line. 
Their O line has been or get a horrible. defense, defense or O line. Don't drive. I don't think this is the year for the quarterback. I think no. D line. I, I think, think D line was D line. D line wrecks game when San Francisco had a healthy D line. They I mean, you saw what they did to Aaron Rodgers, and the reason that the Giants upset the Patriots when the Patriots were perfect. D line. D line wrecks games. Okay, but I think I think O line is more important than defensive line. I I disagree. If with if I were the Dolphins, I would take Chase Young over Joe Burrow. Oh yeah, I mean uh, yeah, and I'm I'm one of the guys. I said they should take Saquon over Baker. I said they should. I thought Garrett should have been the first overall pick. I'm not a huge believer in taking QBs number one overall usually. Yeah, it works out sometimes. Andrew Luck, uh, Peyton Manning, Kyler Murray. James. Kyle, Kyle will probably work. Wasn't James' first pick? Yeah. <sighs> I like. I think James is good. I, anyway. Not, yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how much I like Burrow. I don't know why. I just and I do like Hurts. I know a lot of people are downing Hurts in the NFL. I do. Like I think. Hurts. I think Hurts is going to be the best out of this class. Yeah, I agree with the way that. The not end. not best player. He's not going to be better than Chase Young, but best quarterback. And by the way, to whatever stupid ESPN analyst said that Chase Young is already better than the Bosa brothers, what? you deserve to lose your job. So, anyway. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, yeah. someone, someone yeah, said that. I know, he can't say that yet, but Chase Young might be. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. Well, yeah, man. Bosa brothers are dominating the league, though. Who would have thought? Not really. It's okay. just one, one's on a good team, the other is on the Chargers. At the beginning of this Both year, killing, at the beginning of this year, who would have thought that we'd be sitting in uh, Chris's wine cellar talking about the Miami Dolphins? Not me. That's insane. I definitely would be. Well, anyways, that concludes our second episode of the Practice Squad. Make sure to catch us on our Instagram at the Practice underscore Squad, and we will see you guys on Christmas for our Christmas episode. See you guys later.